Hi everyone. Let us discuss Leibniz theorem. Okay, we are going to discuss this theorem after that statement of theorem. After that, we will discuss its proof. It is very important theorem. Okay, so when we have to discuss convergence or divergence of any alternating series, mostly we use this theorem. Okay, so then this theorem says if you have such type of alternating series a one minus a two plus a three minus a four and so on, with these conditions, all n must be positive. Second condition. n must be monotonic decreasing sequence and the last one that n should be a convergent sequence and converges to zero then this alternating series summation minus 1 raised to n plus 1 n is convergent series okay so this is leibniz theorem so let us prove this theorem so when we want to prove any series is convergent mostly we take help of sequence of partial sum so here also i will consider that sn be a sequence of partial sum of this series so let me mention here let let sn be a sequence of partial sum so you are familiar with sequence of partial sum s1 means first sum a1 s2 what will be my s2 s2 is a first sum of first two terms a1 minus a2 actually a2 has minus sign so i should carry here but see This is decreasing sequence. A n is decreasing sequence. That's why a one is greater than or equal to a two. So obviously it is greater than or equal to zero. I should mention the reason since a one is greater than or equal to a two. What about s three? A one minus a two plus a three. Okay, I will skip it. I will directly go for s four. S four means a one minus a two plus a three minus a four. Right? A one minus a two is nothing but s two. So S two plus A three minus A four, but see A three is greater than or equal to A four, so that's why this is a positive number, non-negative number getting. So that's why this is we can write this is greater than or equal to S two, since the reason is A three is greater than or equal to A four. Okay, we are using this information here. So let us use this space. We have this space. Okay. So what we get, I should mention it clearly. So therefore. S four is greater than or equal to S two. After that, what will I do? I will skip S five directly. I will go for S six. Now S six. S six we can write in the same way. A one minus A two plus A three minus A four plus A five minus A six. That is nothing but S four plus A five minus A six. After that, I will use the same logic again. That is. A five is greater than or equal to A six, so that's why this is positive real number, non-negative real number, and we will have this is greater than or equal to S four. The reason is same again. A five is greater than or equal to A six, so what it means S six is greater than or equal to S four. So in general, in general, what can we write? Well, we started with this one, zero less than or equal to S two. After that, S two less than or equal to S four, S four less than or equal to S six, and so on. Less than or equal to S two n, less than or equal to n, so on. Getting two n. So since we have considered all even suffix only, so therefore we can say S two n is monotonic increasing sequence. So therefore, S two n is monotonic. increasing sequence okay it's monotonic increasing sequence okay see there is uh, not enough space to write now make a screenshot of it then we will go further see now consider s2n again okay so we are considering a sequence s2n sequence of partial sum so s2n means sum of first two n terms okay of that series that means we will have A one minus A two plus A three minus A four plus and so on. Uh, we will have S two n. Uh, I should write minus here. Two n minus two plus A two n minus one minus A two n. The last term will be A two n, right? See after that, what will I do? I will write A one as it is. I will take minus sign common. So A two minus A three. Here I will take minus sign common. So A four minus A five. And so on. Here also I will take minus sign common. A two n minus two minus A two n minus one, and the last term will be as it is. 
That means here I kept the first and last term as it is after that we form the brackets for remaining terms. Okay. But see, we know that a n, a n is basically monotonic decreasing sequence. So the first term is obviously greater than the next term. So this term, uh, see this one is a2 is greater than a3. So this will be non-negative number. This bracket will be non-negative. This bracket is also non-negative. So, okay. So let me mention here, here, all brackets, all brackets give non-negative numbers, non-negative numbers. Okay. So, yes. So, we are subtracting few numbers. We are subtracting few numbers from A1. So, therefore, obviously, S2n is less than or equal to A1. This is true for all n belongs to set of natural number. Getting? See, you are getting what I am saying. We are subtracting few numbers and from A1 and then we are getting S2n. So, S2n can be obtained by subtracting few numbers from A1. So, obviously, A1 is larger than S2n. So, I, I wrote the same thing here. This is true for all n belongs to set of natural number. Getting? So, just now we proved S2n is monotonic increasing and now we are seeing it is bounded above. Okay, let me mention it clearly. Here, here S2n, uh, I should mention therefore, therefore S2n is monotonic, it's monotonic increasing sequence. It's monotonic increasing sequence, which is bounded above. Okay, so yes, we have proved it here. It is monotonic increasing sequence, which so bounded above. We have already proved this result. When you have any monotonic increasing sequence, which is bounded above, then it is convergent. So therefore, we can mention, therefore, S2n is convergent sequence. Okay, so therefore, it converges to some point. So limit n tends to infinity. S2n is equal to S. I'm call, we are calling it as S. Huh? We are not given. Okay, I'm calling it as Yes, equation number one. So, limit of S2n is equal to S. So, we discuss now for all terms with even suffix. So, let us talk about odd suffix. Now, S2n plus one, that means I have considered odd number now. So, will you tell me how to find S2n plus one? It's very obvious, no? If you have S2n, if you add simply a 2n plus one, if you add this number in S2n, you will have S2n plus one, right? That means S2n, that means sum of first 2n uh, uh, terms, okay, of that series. And we are adding the 2n plus 1 term. So, obviously, we will have S2n plus 1. See, uh, we have some space, let us use. Now, what will I do? I will apply limit on both sides. So, let us see what will happen. So, therefore, limit n tends to infinity, S2n plus 1 is equal to limit n tends to infinity, S2n. Here also I will apply the limit, limit n tends to infinity a to n plus 1. Just now we proved its limit is s, we have called it as s plus. This is a given information, okay, that sequence n converges to 0. This is a given information in the statement of this theorem. So, its value is 0, so this is s. So, therefore, s to n plus 1, this is also convergent sequence and converges to x. S, okay, sorry. See that what it means S2n is convergent, converges to uh, sorry, S2n uh, is convergent and converges to S, and S2n plus 1 is also convergent and converges to S. That means if you consider even uh, sequence of partial sum, then it is converges to S, and odd sequence of partial sum that is also converges to S. Therefore, the sequence of partial sum Sn is also convergent and converges to the same point S. Let me mention it here. So, here I have clearly mentioned, therefore, even and odd partial sums are, both of them are convergent and converges to S. So, therefore, therefore, Sn is convergent and converges to same point S. As the sequence of partial sum is convergent, corresponding series is also convergent. So, therefore, series summation n running from 1 to infinity minus 1 raised to n plus 1 n is convergent getting so in this way we proved given alternating series is convergent so therefore here we can say the result is proved okay make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you bye bye